Good morning. Today in Israel, coalition members are afraid that Likud could stop the new elections from happening. Naftali Bennett is probably stepping down from politics, at least for now. The United Nations is now blaming Israel for the death of Al Jazeera reporter Shireen Abu Akleh and some real headlines that you will never hear in the mainstream media. I'm Justin, and this is the Israel Guys Daily. Welcome to the Israel Guys Daily, where we cut through the fog of fake news to bring you the accurate headlines from Israel. Guys, the world is filled with fake news, lies, and propaganda when it comes to Israel, and the purpose of the Israel Guys Daily is to give you the truth straight from the source. That's why we're broadcasting straight from the heartland of Israel to make sure you can stay accurately informed on Israel. Guys, please subscribe, uh, leave us a comment and like the video, or if you're just listening on podcast platform, follow us and leave us a review. Everything that you do helps uh, the show to reach more people with the accurate information on Israel. For those of you who don't know, we're part of the organization Hayovel that brings volunteers to Israel to help the Jewish farmer. We have lots of people signing up to join us in Israel this fall, and space is limited. We're capping each trip uh, with 50 people. In the past, we've had like three to 500 people just for one fall season. If you come, you will harvest grapes, plant trees, and do other agricultural volunteer services, all while experiencing the land and people of Judea and Samaria. Come to Israel to serve the people of Israel, be immersed in Israeli culture, deepen your faith, and fulfill biblical prophecy. Go to serveisrael.com to find out more. The link is in the description below. Guys, what's happening in Israel today? Some coalition members are fearing that the, uh, that Likud could block new elections from happening. The Israeli government's plan to dissolve the Knesset and call new elections faces a key test Monday as legislation ending the 24th Knesset faces review in committee. So last week, as you guys probably know, the Knesset voted 110 to zero to back 11 various bills calling for the dissolution of the Knesset, sending Israel to its fifth, fifth general election in three years. The Knesset vote sent the bills to the House Committee for review. Once the bills uh, receive committee approval, they will be brought before the Knesset plenum for their last two votes. Um, but the chairman of the House Committee is none other than Yamina M.K. near Orbach. And uh, some coalition members are fearing that he might intentionally delay the approval process, which would give the Likud an opportunity to form a new government in the current Knesset without elections. Norabak is the MK who bolted the government earlier this month to back the opposition. Uh, The Likud has sought support from coalition members, including Yamina, New Hope, and Blue and White in an effort to topple the current government and form a new one, thus preventing alternate Prime Minister Yair Lapid from becoming Prime Minister during election season. Um, So the government basically hopes to dissolve the Knesset before midnight between Thursday and Friday, which is actually when the Judea and Samaria law is set to expire. So if the Knesset is dissolved prior to the law's expiration, it will automatically be extended another six months, um, which would give the next government the opportunity to pass the five-year extension without the law terminating. Uh, Should the government fail to dissolve the Knesset by Thursday night, however... Israeli law currently applied to Area C of Judea and Samaria indirectly via the Defense Ministry's civil administration will no longer be enforced in Jewish communities in the area. Knesset lawmakers are warning that this could create total chaos in the area. Uh, we have yet to see like, if, the, if it's not passed, what will actually happen in Judea and Samaria, but people are warning that chaos could happen without the enforcement of law. I guess the real question is, though, can elections actually be averted? Like, it, what are the chances of this happening? MK Betzelow Smotrich says that there's still a chance. Uh, Betzelow Smotrich, he is the head of the religious Zionism party, still has hopes that elections can be averted and an alternative government be formed from among the members of the current Knesset. 
In an interview on Radio 103 FM, Smotrich said that he had, quote, not despaired of the possibility of fulfilling the will of the majority of the people and establishing a nationalist government within the current Knesset. Uh, in this same interview, Smotrich also commented on a statement which was made in the last few days by Likud MK, Duty and Salem, who indicated that he would be prepared to sit in a coalition together with the Ram Party chairman, Mansour Abbas. But afterwards, he was hotly criticized by the party's chairman, uh, Likud chairman, Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, who said he would never sit in a government with supporters of terrorism. Uh, we would have to see if he gets elected, if that's true. Uh, guys, Naftali Bennett might be temporarily leaving politics. In an interview published by Haaretz uh, Friday morning, the outgoing prime minister implied that he will be taking a break from politics after stepping down as prime minister, while adding that he does intend to return at some later date. Um, so Bennett held consultations Sunday as he's considering his political future and uh, planning the transfer of power to Yair Lapid. During these consultations, Bennett told confidants that he is considering resigning in the coming days. I actually think that this that this might be a really good move for Naftali Bennett right now. I've I think the whole government is pretty upset at him for the basically failed government for the past year and a half. I think the government's pretty uh, I mean the country is pretty upset with him right now. So if he steps out and just takes a break for a while then he might actually have more of a political future whereas if he uh, runs in the next government, yeah, I think his chances are pretty slim. Um, so with Yair Lapid as prime minister, he would basically automatically become the alternate prime minister, but now he's considering leaving the government altogether. He said he plans to try and make a comeback later, which he might possibly do. He said, quote, I think I was a good prime minister. Yitzhak Rabin was during his first time a failed prime minister because of bad political behavior. And even Netanyahu, when they came back in 1976, they learned their lessons. According to a Khan News report, Bennett told his associates, quote, I'll decide on my political future only after the dissolution of the Knesset. So all this is just uh, speculation right now. We'll see what Naftali Bennett does um, after the Knesset is dissolved. That is if Benjamin Netanyahu doesn't make a government. Um, so according to I yell at Shaked, if Bennett decides not to run in the up com upcoming elections, she herself will head the uh, Yamana party despite the fact that Bennett would prefer the religious affairs minister, Matan Kahana, to head it instead. Channel 12 News reported that Shaked will clarify that she does not rule out sitting with the Likud and MK Benjamin Netanyahu, who is the first option from her perspective, and that she will try to provide a solution for all the Israelis who, on the one hand, uh, were not happy with the current government, but on the other hand, do not want to vote for Likud or religious Zionism. I guess the greatest question is whether the number of people who believe in Shaked's message is great enough for her party to pass the electoral threshold in the elections, which I kind of have my doubts about. Moving on, guys, guess who is blaming Israel for the death of the Al Jazeera reporter Shireen Abu Akleh? Yep, you guessed it. None other than the United Nations themselves. Um. For a while now, much of the mainstream news has blamed Israel for the death of Shireen Abu Akleh, including CNN, the Washington Post, and the Associated Press. They're not only saying that it was Israel that um, killed her, but they're saying they did it on purpose and that it was an assassination. Uh, now the UN has joined the bandwagon and is officially blaming Israel. On Friday, the UN Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, or the OHCHR, released a statement saying that it is, quote, deeply disturbing that Israeli authorities have not conducted a criminal investigation six weeks after the death of Al Jazeera journalist Shireen Abu Akleh under disputed circumstances during a May 11th gun battle between the Israeli Defense Forces and Palestinians in Jenin. The OHCHR statement added that the agency conducted independent monitoring. Ooh, that's good. That means it's definitely fact. If the OHCHR conducted independent monitoring uh, into the incident, incident, and guess what they determined? Uh, yep, they determined that the bullet that killed Abu Akleh could have only come from Israeli forces and that the bullets fired at and around Abu Akleh were seemingly well-aimed. 
Um, the Israeli mission in Geneva responded with its own statement saying the OHCHR, quote, once again deplorably fails to mention the main obstacle to establishing the truth in this tragic incident. The Palestinian Authority's refusal to conduct a joint investigation and hand over the bullet, this Palestinian attitude should raise doubts. Indeed, it should. The, uh, this should raise doubts all over the world and in the news, but unfortunately it's not. This is uh, very suspicious that the Palestinian Authority is refusing to do a uh, uh, investigation with Israel, joint investigation, and that they're refusing to hand over the bullet. Um, the Israeli mission noted that without access to the bullet, it isn't possible to definitely determine whether Abu Akleh was killed by Israeli security forces or indiscriminate Palestinian gunfire from within the Janin camp, where the IDF was searching for suspects in the midst of an Arab terror spree against Israelis. So um, at this time, there was a huge terror spree going on. Uh, many Israelis sadly lost their lives. Um, and 11 of the terror victims were killed by Janine or residents. So this is the whole reason in the first place why the IDF were conducting an operation in Janine. They weren't just going on a raid as a lot of the mainstream news is trying to paint. They're, they were going in to serve justice, to find these criminals and terrorists who killed 11 of their citizens. The Israeli mission said, quote, it is regrettable yet not surprising that the high commissioner and her office do not call in for an investigation into those repeated terrorist attacks and the continued incitement by the Palestinians that led to the murder of Israeli civilians, including with firearms, knives, and even axes. Shielding the Palestinian Authority and Hamas from their responsibilities and obligations will only encourage them to pursue violence. They're 100% right. Shielding Hamas and the PA will or does encourage them to pursue to pursue more violence. Uh, the IDF has been conducting and expanding an inquiry into Abu Akleh's death and the circumstances surrounding it. Israeli officials have said that there's not been a criminal investigation opened because there's no evidence of Israeli criminal activity related to the incident. And they're completely right. There's no evidence that Israeli shot her. And even if there was no, definitely no evidence that it was done on purpose which would make it a crime. However, uh, since the incident, the IDF has been examining the circumstances of Abu Akleh's death. And recently, IDF Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Aviv Kohavi ordered to broaden the inquiry and decided to expand the team working on it. So far, the inquiry has found that she was not shot intentionally and the other claims remain unfounded. Uh, among, along these same lines, two dozen Democratic senators sent a letter to Washington on Thursday calling for the United States to get involved in the investigation into the death of Shireen Abu Akleh. The letter, released by Senator Chris Van Hollen, claims that there's not been an independent, thorough, and transparent investigation into Akleh's death. According to the senators, the Biden administration should have a role in the investigation due to the U.S. government serving as a leader in efforts to protect the press and because of her American citizenship. So Abu Akleh was actually an American citizen, um, as well as she also had uh, an East Jerusalem identity card. In, in the letter from the senators, it, it said, quote, it is clear that neither of the parties on the ground trusts the other to conduct a credible and independent investigation. Therefore, at this point, we believe the only way to achieve that goal is for the United States to be directly involved in the investigation into Ms. Abu Akleh's death. Uh, so while Israeli authorities have blamed her death on crossfire, um, the senators expressed their skepticism, writing that a number of respected independent news organizations have reached a different conclusion. The letter cites reports by the Washington Post, CNN, and the Associated Press that concluded that there was no Palestinian gunfire emanating from the location of the shooting at the time of Ms. Abu Akleh's death. And we all know that we can 100% trust CNN and the Associated Press. They would never report biased news, and they would definitely never tell any lies. <clears throat> um, the letter also pointed out that Israeli military authorities have been barred from examining the bullet that killed Akleh by the Palestinian Authority, which has said it will only provide it to a third party. The Council on American Islamic Relations praised the letter, calling it direct and powerful, adding that there is absolutely no excuse for the Biden administration to not get involved. 
The letter said, quote, we commend the senators who signed this letter, which sends a clear message that Shireen Abu Ankle's assassination by Israeli forces cannot be covered up or ignored in the same way so many other brutal acts targeting Palestinians have been in past decades. Ooh, so now it's an assassination. Israel assassinated Shireen Abu Akhle. Also, about those um, brutal attacks targeting Palestinians. Please show me evidence of these. I would love to see him. <laughs> Guys, as we close out today, I have a few headlines for you that you will never, ever hear in the mainstream news. First, two days ago, an IDF reservist medic from the Agos Battalion stopped stopped on the street to provide treatment to a Palestinian child who was injured after being run over by a Palestinian driving a Jeep. His life was saved thanks to the treatment by the IDF medic. We'll put a picture up here, here on the screen. You can actually see the IDF medic performing aid to this Palestinian child. Also, a few days ago, a complex ear reconstruction operation was successfully performed at the B'nai Zion Medical Center in Israel and a nine-year-old Palestinian boy from Nablus who was born without hearing. And they say Israel is apartheid. What do you think of that? Guys, if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to subscribe here on YouTube or if you're just listening on your uh, favorite podcast platform. Make sure to leave us a comment, write us a review, and come back every single day, Monday through Friday, for more daily news from Israel. As Christians, our mission is to stand unconditionally with the land and people of Israel. I'm Justin Hilton, and this is the Israel Guys Daily.